We are here on Corbett Report Radio tonight, and it is Thursday night, so we're going to talk once again to our regular Thursday night guest, the one and only James Evan Pilato of FoodWorldOrder.com. James, great to have you here tonight. Thank you so much, as always, for your time. Thank you so much. It's, it's great to be back with you. Well, it's great to have you here, and uh, I think we should probably start off by letting the listeners know about uh, an exciting new uh, feed that you've just set up through Food, Food World Order. Yeah, I, I, I basically, I put the the main feed for the site, which I'll tell folks right here is feeds.feedburner.com slash food world order. But I submitted it to the iTunes store. And after a few hours, it spat back out and it's updated. And there is an entry in the iTunes store, food world order. And of course, it, it'll already start to come up as a related kind of show, James, to, to the shows we're already doing that are that are up there. But it's, I think, a great way you can get the PDFs that come out and that may contain, you know, some of the, the reports and the research and the, you know, the journal entries and the things that we discuss on this show, as well as, you know, M- MP3s and the videos. That's what I love about Medium, Media Monarchy and all the stuff that you're doing, because you always, as you say, you always do put those documents in there for people to find the source of the information for themselves. I, I, I really, you know, attempt to do it, you know, to the best of my ability. And I know that sometimes those, those links may not always last but if people are subscribed to the feed, and that's what's great about podcasts is once they go out, they can't they can't take them away from you. Hmm. <laughs> so they're well, I've, at least I, not yet. At least not yet. But I've seen things where because I was a subscriber, I got a video that they then ultimately pulled for you know any various number of reasons. So I think that's important. Yeah, it is, and I'm uh, I'm glad iTunes and Apple is playing ball with you. As uh, many people out there might know, they don't play ball with Corbett Report for whatever <laughs> reason. Um, so Corbett Report is not available through the iTunes Store, or at least only my videos are. So there's uh, there's details about how to subscribe to the Corbett Report feeds on corporatereport.com slash subscribe, and you have to do a little bit of uh, jiggery pokery and behind the scenes <laughs> magic to make it work. But you can still get it through iTunes and your podcatcher of choice. And but good on Lord. That note, also, we should probably let people know that uh, not only are we here broadcasting on Republic Broadcasting, but we also put this out via video, and uh, we're starting to do that on a weekly basis. And that's, you know, I, I unfortunately, I need to upgrade my, my gear a little bit. It takes a long time to render and spit out, you know, a relatively short 15, 20-minute video. But, but I love doing it, and I love kind of teaching myself, you know, the video, even on a rudimentary level. So I was just going to say, James, you know, and of course uh, the troubles with uh, iTunes, but the, you know, the GooTube gods, of course, apparently are never going to grant you, you know, a director's account where you can upload videos longer than 15 minutes because if they haven't done it for you by now, I can't see that they're going to. But our good friend Morgan Lesko of Wiki World Order hosts the Food World Order videos for my for myself and and for you James they they end up being about 22 minutes and I just I haven't felt like chopping them into two pieces so uh, again, I think you're right to do so and uh we should we should throw in a plug for that not only uh wikiworldorder.org I think I, want I think to say, both oh, work. I should actually check that I think I dot .com and dot .org both work. Oh, okay. Yeah, and well, I've, I've stuttered got wikiworldorder.org on that too. Uh, <laughs> bookmarked here and also youtubecom slash order. so I hope people will check mm-hmm. that out and uh thank him for for hosting those videos. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, it's amazing. And again, it's that great way to kind of reach out and and keep things going and you know, many hands make light work. James, you were going over all of the sort of around the world news and and that got me thinking of, you know, I kind of went to Google News is kind of my initial source, and I have it, of course, kind of tricked out to show me more, you know, the news that I I want to find and I want to see. And I thought of a way to kind of get into this evening in our Food World Order coverage. Syria's chaos reaches its kitchen. And this was, you know, all I had to do was type Syria in food. And there's already, you know, discussions of the, you know, the growing humanitarian crisis as, again, this problem, reaction, solution situation on the grand chessboard plays out in another kind of predictable way, but serious turmoil is showing signs of reaching the country's kitchens as disruptions in transportation and trade sanctions are conspiring to shrink supplies and boost prices at a time when harvests are constrained by poor weather. James, that's again from the media org, And just, you know, one other data point that again, you sometimes just have to shake your head to not, you know, cry. Uh, that's basically it. And, and once again, it goes back to that fundamental idea. If you control the food, you control the people. And, uh, and that works in so many different ways and so many different aspects. And there are so many different ways to use that as a, a pressure point against uh, oppressed populations. 
But let's let's be a little more positive now, shall we? With a, a story Please, yes. that uh, you know I saw in in print in the big papers in the local papers, and I have it posted on foodworldorder.com. Dead for thirty two thousand years, an Arctic plant is revived. Living plants have been regener have been generated rather from the fruit of a little Arctic flower, the narrow leafed campion that died thirty two thousand years ago. A team of Russian scientists reports the fruit was stored by an Arctic ground squirrel in its burrow on the tundra of the northeastern Siberia and laid permanently frozen until excavated by scientists a few years ago. This would be the oldest plant by far that has ever been grown from ancient tissue. The present record was held by a date palm grown from a seed some 2,000 years old that was recovered from the ancient fortress of Masada in Israel. Seeds and certain cells can last a long term under the right conditions, and this story goes on to you know discuss you know how it was found and what maybe could be done despite this unpromising background coming, of course, from the frozen tundra. The new claim is supported by a firm Radiocarbon Date, a similar avenue of inquiry into the deep past. The field of ancient DNA was at first discredited after claims of retrieving dinosaur DNA proved erroneous, but with improved methods has produced spectacular results like the reconstitution of the Neanderthal genome. This new report is a team led by Svetlana Yashina and David Gilichinsky of the Russian Academy of Sciences Research Center at Pushchino near Moscow and appears in the, I believe, most recent issue of the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences of the United States of America. That's PNAS.org. At last check, again, James, they're not giving up the PDF, but you can get the abstract on this story. And, and it brings up the idea, that, you know, will we see the dodo come back? in a couple years and uh in a follow-up story next week scientists are able to collect some dinosaur dna from a mosquito that flew into some amber a few million years ago and uh and reconstitute the t-rex exactly you know i found in the over the last couple of years digging into the michael crichton films that have made from his books he's one of those guys you kind of look at you're like hey this dude was really on to something he really was. I, I was actually quite surprised myself because I always just, uh, you know, being an English literature major and a, a literary snob, I thought, <laughs> oh, just, uh, oh, he's a pulp fiction writer, you know, second rate. But actually watching some of his lectures that he gave, uh, especially about climate change and the entire hoax that was going on there. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's some videos up on YouTube of him talking about the, the Internet and how it was going to start affecting society. And keep in mind, this was 10 years ago or mm -hmm. something. Some really, really interesting thoughts. He was actually quite a profound thinker in some ways. And he even kind of wrote and directed a lot of the early versions of his films. I think he was the one who directed the original Andromeda Strain, which, you know, I, I love that. But I, we're digressing a, a tad bit, James. A, a tad, but still interesting nonetheless. <laughs> Do you have any any other thoughts on the uh, Arctic flower before we... I, uh, I want to keep it positive, so I'll, I'll bite my tongue thinking about uh, the Kurds vials of the world and the people who think that this is the type of technology that's going to revive all the dead people of the past so we can live forever and all the transhumanism monks. So, um, so let's just move on before okay. it's too late. <laughs> uh, another one actually from the New York Times. This, uh, again, caught my eye because it was a product. It is a product we sell at my store. And again, for folks out there, the disclosure of I, I work at an independent grocery store chain here in Portland, Oregon. We're only in the Pacific Northwest, and we compete with the Trader Joe's and the Whole Foods and Safeway and Fred Meyer and all that stuff. Trademarks take on new importance in Internet era. Now, automatically, this doesn't really sound like it's about food, but it's all it's all connected. As a cereal snack food entrepreneur, Warren Wilson was no stranger to the challenges of running a business in the early days, selling funnel cakes, and basically being broke. But it still came as a bit of a shock when the Wilsons made, he and his wife, made what they thought was a routine move to register the trademark of their hot product, a flat pretzel snack called Pretzel Crisps. And it was contested by none other than Frito-Lay, the 800-pound gorilla of the snack food market owned by PepsiCo. This is so different from anything else we've faced because we're not fighting a product in the supermarket. We're not fighting against an institution like a bank. We're not dealing with an act of nature. Wilson said in an interview at his company's headquarters, This fight is about a big company that wants to dominate the snack food category by crushing a little company like ours rather than by competing with us. Frito-Lay, whose rolled gold pretzel products 
which actually, James, interestingly enough, we, we dumped from our shelves this last week at the store. But I do also discover here that Stacy's Pita Chips is owned by Frito-Lay, which I did not know. And they compete with Pretzel Crisps. They, of course, all declined to discuss this case, citing the pending dispute with the Wilson's company. James, this gets into all these questions about, you know, milk chocolate bar is a generic term. Does pretzel crisp really mean anything? And then make the comparison of Kimberly Clark's Kleenex, you know, facial to or Xerox or even something being photoshopped. Mm, yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Can we even imagine a world without trademarks and copyrights? I mean, how... How, how brilliant would that be in so many different ways? But uh, but absolutely. And and it was a story uh, kind of related somewhat off the topic of food, but uh, it was pretty big in China when I was there a couple of weeks ago. But apparently Apple's been ha waging this uh, legal battle against some uh, Chinese company that I guess uh, maybe in Taiwan or somewhere. I, I can't remember exactly, but they, they had registered the iPad uh, name uh, over 10 years ago. It was, it stood for something with some kind of acronym IPAD, but they registered iPad so that Apple can't actually use iPad in, in China. And they, um, and they're, I think it's being contested in other places where this was tr uh, registered by that same company. So they're, they're spending tens of millions of dollars on this suit apparently. And, uh, and I just saw a recent, uh, thing about the, the new Apple that they're releasing some kind of smart TV this year. And there's all the speculation about what, what they'll call it. Cause they can't use Apple TV. That's already used for a different system they have. And they can't use ITV because that's registered as a, as a major broadcaster mm -hmm. in England and things like that. So, so what will it be? And all of this kind of, I don't know, bizarre fighting over names is, is, uh, it's a bizarre thing to watch, but, uh, but as someone who's tried to register domain names and think of good domain names in the past, it's, uh, it's interesting to see, like usernames on Twitter and things like that. Anything you can think of has already been registered by someone, and it can be a frustrating experience. So it's, mm -hmm. uh, it's an interesting thing to think about at any rate. Yeah, yeah, and I even just actually just just kind of poking around. I think maybe I was trying to bring up the, uh, the iTunes store entry now for Food World Order. And saw, I think, just a really recent video from just this past January of Ian Crane talking. And the video title on YouTube was called Food, World Order, and Imperialism. And for the second, I was like, huh. hey, dude, that's my word. <laughs> but then in the other way, it's like, awesome. Like, that's out there. And, and, I, and I love it because I never, what am I? I'm, oh, yeah, I'm going to profit off of those three words. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> I, well, probably not, but at the very least, we can we can win the uh, info war with the memes. So uh, That's you're it. a one man meme generator. I, I love it. I love it. I, and you know, and I always kind of thank you know my girlfriend and those other couple of close friends, and we're always kind of bouncing bouncing names off each other because again, you know, they they have real real power. Speaking of real power, James, the FDA that would be our Food and Drug Administration to review the safety of inhalable caffeine. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration officials plan to investigate whether inhalable caffeine sold in lipstick size canisters is safe for consumers and if its manufacturer was right to brand it as a dietary supplement. AeroShot, that's A-E-R-O-S-H-O-T, went on the market late last month in Massachusetts and New York, and it's also available in France. Consumers put one end of the canister in their mouths and breathe in, releasing a fine powder that dissolves almost instantly. This may remind you of the e-cigarette. Each gray and yellow plastic canister contains B vitamins plus 100 milligrams of caffeine powder, about the equivalent of the caffeine in a large cup of coffee. AeroShot inventor, Harvard biomedical engineer Professor David Edwards says the product is safe and doesn't contain taurine and other common additives used to enhance the caffeine effects in energy drinks. AeroShot didn't require FDA review before hitting the U.S. market because it's sold as a dietary supplement. But New York's U.S. Senator Chucky Schumer said he met with FDA Commissioner Dr. Margaret Hamburg after, and, and she agreed to review the safety and legality of AeroShot. I'm worried about how a product like this impacts kids and teens, Schumer said, and they plan to announce something this upcoming Sunday. James, this, you know, it brings up so many things, you know, what's a dietary supplement, what isn't, and they go on to discuss the controversy over the last year or so of drinks called like Four Loco that are basically alcohol and caffeine kind of mixed together, which they've, they've mi what mixed. What could go wrong? Exactly. You know, and the kids call it blackout in a can. Mm. But it, uh, like, you know, well, in a way, yeah. I almost wonder, it seems like these sort of more ridiculous products kind of flooding the marketplace being called dietary supplements in a way 
and not just now, maybe even kind of thinking of this, is it poisoning the well of all the other sort of real natural remedies, you know, that, that we love and take and, and value then with Codex Alimentarius or some other kind of police state move, it's like, oh, we got to crack down on these crazy, you know, e-cigarettes and inhalable caffeines. Meanwhile, you won't be able to get, you know, hemp or chlorella or spirulina or colloidal silver or any of those things you may want and need. Well, this is this is problem, reaction, solution to a T. And, and the real solution, when you really hack away at the issues here and look what is the fundamental underlying issue, it's the fact that we have this thing called the FDA that is supposed to be this government-appointed body that will tell people what is safe and what is not safe and whether this should be a dietary supplement or whether it should be regulated under some other type of uh, regulation. But can we imagine a world where there is no such thing as a, as a government-controlled state monopoly on the FDA or, or any organization like that where it's actually privatized so that everybody actually has to make decisions for themselves whether or not they want to put something in their body and someone could be selling you a total lie and they could be selling you total bs and it could be harmful to you so you actually have to think for yourself whether you want to put something in your body instead of relying on some label from some government approved body and of course that would devolve into a system where people of course would pay something like an fda or some 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 body that would that would function like an FDA to put their seal of approval on things that they think mm -hmm. is safe. And if they made wrong decisions and people ended up dying, people wouldn't use them anymore and they'd go out of business. Can people imagine that type of society rather than one where mummy or daddy government is going to tell you, it's okay, we've looked into it and it's all safe. So now it's got the seal of approval. Because um, my I, buddies in the industry, because <laughs> my good buddies in the industry, you know, they, they assure me yeah. it's safe. <laughs> yep. That's exactly it. And that's the point. If government fails, well, nothing happens. If, if anything, they get more money, they get more power. But if a privately owned body that was supposed to act like that failed, they would go out of business. So I, I'm not saying it would be a perfect utopia, but it would be a hell of a lot better than what we've got right now. Mm, mm, mm. James, we were discussing earlier just it, uh, about some of the products and who owns what. And I think I've, I've often said that, you know, that's almost a, a full time job in and of itself is just to kind of be aware of of who owns what and to try and pass that on information on to, you know, the, the customers and people that I meet at, at work every day. That's it. Yeah. And there has to be more websites like that resource, the non GMO foods resource. So people mm -hmm. can, can look up that there should be other resources to find out who owns what and things like that. And, uh, and people have to start putting this intelligence together for themselves because if they wait for mummy or daddy government to do it, well, it's not going to work out for them. But on that note, we've got we're right up against the break. We'll be right back after this message. Better get yourself together. Pretty soon you're going to be dead. No way, and man. on that uplifting note, <laughs> let's finish off with the food world order, why don't we? And uh, I guess it must be time for a binge and purge. That's right. I was, that's what I was going to say. I was like, you know what time it is. And here we go. It's called the binge and purge authorization animals and amusement. France asks EU to suspend GM crop authorization. That is from the French Agency Press. Meanwhile, back here in the USSA, Boulder, Colorado, working to ban GM crops on county-owned land. That's from the always great foodfreedom.wordpress.com. Lower global crop prices to ease food inflation, says USDA. That's just from a little bit ago from Reuters. And James, here's one. Did you catch this from Ars Technica? Maybe I'm, I'm a little bit behind, but environment researcher admits leaking climate docs claims they're genuine. Oh, yeah. I think his name is Peter Gleick. And uh, yeah, they supposedly found the secret documents exposing the Heartland Institute and how they're secretly funded by the Koch brothers and all of this. And it turns out <laughs> not only did he lie and commit impersonations and things to try to get documents out of Heartland, they also, whoever did this in, behind the scenes, actually faked the documents that were part of the, uh, the controversy. So <laughs> it just huh. everything that the, uh, the alarmists do backfires on them so spectacularly. <laughs> and yet the funny thing is I've already had someone email me uh, the link to the uh, this the article that was originally written about that going oh look oh the uh, you know heartland is secretly funded by the Koch brothers and so i sent him the correction 
<laughs> Continuing through the binge and purge, James, eatdrinkbetter.com says that the fast food place Chipotle, which I'm pretty sure is owned by McDonald's, makes delicious food and fights for animals. And I had to add the question mark because I wonder, really? Swiss food giant Nestle predicts a tough, ye- tough year of 2012 after posting stronger than expected 2011 sales. That's from the Washington Post. Food inflation hidden in tinier and tinier packages, James. Here it is again. Mars cutting their king-size candy bar. So, you know, just as, you know, Super Size Me was the end of the, you know, the fatty burgers at McDonald's, finally you're going to have to cut down on the uh, the candy bar. But, James, we mentioned the inhalable caffeine. E-cigarette explosion burns Florida man's face, knocks out his teeth. And I had been thinking, oh, maybe this would be a good way to kind of help myself stop smoking and then a scary story like that it's like oh god (laughs) texas students boycott school lunch after learning about the concept of boycotts in their history class that great story is from (laughs) victoriaadvocate.com drug testing coming for america's unemployed that's right in the new payroll tax holiday extension that the obama saya pushed through there's drug testing before people can get their benefits that they've already paid for well, I know you just put this uh, binge and purge up recently, so I haven't had a chance to look through the stories individually uh-huh. yet. But uh, I like the sound of that Texas students boycotting school lunch. Um, uh-huh. and, you know, no matter what it's about, <laughs> even just the fact that they're actually starting to exercise uh, that that concept is uh, is hopeful. Mm-hmm. There are some people who can actually realize they do have power and, and attempt to assert it. There's a last couple of notes uh, from BrassCheckTV.com about the drug war and prohibition and law enforcement against prohibition and the 13th Amendment. And James will close it out with a bit of satire, a little audio satire from The Onion. Local child amuses cafe patrons, but for how long? (laughs) I suppose we all have asked ourselves that at some point or another. At any rate, absolutely great updates a lot of uh, incredible info as always so james evan palato foodworldorder.com thank you so much and uh once again let's direct people to foodworldorder.com so they can subscribe to the brand new uh, itunes uh, podcast feed and they can find mm-hmm. it on the itunes store and uh and the videos coming out at youtube.com slash wiki world order every week so uh once again more and better ways to to get all this information in one great package james thank you again for your time thanks so much man appreciate it All right, thank you, and thank you all for listening. And once again, I'll be here tomorrow night for uh, Corbett Report Radio Friday Night Highlights and then uh, then the weekend. So uh, I'm looking forward to it one more time tomorrow night, and I'll talk to you then. Good night.